Hi everyone, welcome to today's video and it's been quite some time before I uploaded a video. I've just been busy for the past few weeks. But here we go, uh, we're going to discuss today the offset function. So offset function is probably one of the most powerful lookup function you will ever use in MS Excel. It can almost replace VLOOKUP, index match, and even XLOOKUP. Uh, the offset function allows us to uh, have dynamic ranges in the um, in the formula. So let's discuss. So for example, here I have uh, numbers, and let's say that I'm going to use the offset function here to demonstrate basically what an offset function can do. So offset has five arguments. It has the reference, rows, columns, and the optional arguments of height and width. So it's one of the functions that has a lot of arguments in it. It has five. So the first uh, thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to discuss the first three arguments, the reference, the rows, and the columns. So the reference is any cell that you want your offset function to start with. So let's say that I will start at cell A1, and then comma, and then I will put here rows, uh, how many rows I'm going to send the cursor to. So let's say I'm going to put three, and then comma, and then two. So the reference is sort of like a starting point, and then the next two numbers, they're like coordinates. I'm sending the cursor three cells downwards and two cells to the right. So if I close this, so A1, three, comma, two, this will send me to the cell that has the number 19 on it. So to see that, so we have A1, and then one, two, three, and then one, two. So as you can see, I ended up at that cell and it has the value 19 on it. And just to demonstrate again, let's say I have offset here, and then I say one, and then I say five, I would end up with the number 29. That is because from this cell, A1, I said one and then five. So from that point, one, two, three, four, five. So I have 29 in that cell. And that's what the offset function is giving me. Now, that's the first three arguments that are required for you to use the offset function. Now, the offset function really is, or is going to make sense when you complete the other two arguments. So let's say that I'm going to update this, and I'm going to say offset, and then 2 and 3, and that will give me 22. Now, if I'm going to add two more arguments, let's say I'm going to add here 3 and then 2, so I will end up with okay, this range of cells. So take note that in the latest version of Excel, you will get this build over cells. But if you have the early versions of Excel, then you will get an error, okay? Because uh, for the offset function to uh, work, remember the Excel, the, pre the older Excel versions do not fill cells like this. So in the older Excel versions, you would probably use offset with another function, a function that would aggregate like the sum function. So what will happen is you will get one answer and it would be, 150, which if you notice, is actually the sum of the numbers that we have here. So if I highlight this and look at this uh, quick calculation, you get 150, which is what you get if you sum okay, in the older Excel versions. And take note, you could also do this in the uh, latest Excel. Now, if you're wondering why uh, this sells, now going back to the formula, we said A1 and then 2, 3, 3, 2. So it corresponds to this. So we start at A1, and then two, and then three, right? So we end up at that cell, D3, containing the number 22. And the next, or the last two arguments that we have was three and two. And the three and two represents three as the height, and the two as the width of your data. So if you look at this, I have the same cells as what offset function gave me. So again, it's A1. And then one, two, one, two, three, three, and then two. 
And to demonstrate, let's have one more example. So if I say offset, and then 1, and then 3, and then 4, and then 2, I would get these cells. So why would I have this? So from A1, I would have 1, 1, 2, 3. And then we have the last two arguments, which is the height, 4, and then 2. So that's what the offset function does, basically. So as you can see, it has four values, uh, all of which can be made dynamic. So for example, just to make it easy to see, I'm going to put here one, and then four, and then three, and then two. And if I say equals offset from this cell, and then instead of typing the numbers, I would click this is the row, this is the column, this is the height, and this is the width. I will end up with this because it's offset from A1 and then 1, 4, 3, and then 2. Now, my offset function depends on the values of B7, C7, D7, and E7. Therefore, if I change this and say 2 here, you will see that my range of cells are actually dynamically updating. Okay. And this is what the offset function is good for. It allows you to dynamically update okay, values, right? Depending on or dynamically update, yeah, values that which will correspond to a different range of cells. So you can use this if you require that your um, calculations are dynamic. For example, here in this worksheet, I want to find out the total expenses for each of the months in this table. So technically, it just needs a regular sum function. So sum, open parentheses, and then I get the cells, and then enter. So I get this value here, the sum of these cells. But if I double click this, I would end up with wrong answers because when I double click, it will cascade the or it will update the formula downwards. It will not go to the right. So this is one scenario wherein offset can be used because the cells that we have here are dynamic. They have to change depending on the month okay, that we have here. So let's do that. So instead of F2 to F9, I will transform this into offset. So offset of E1. And then I need to get the range that contains the values for January. So that would be 1, 1. That would lead me to the first cell of January. With a height of 8, 8 numbers below, downwards. And one column of numbers, or the width. So as you can see, I will get the same answers. I need to make E1 absolute, so F4. But this will give you the same answers because my cell is always E1 and my numbers are always 1181. So just the same number for all those months, and which is not correct, obviously. So what we're going to do is we're going to update one of this given, one of these numbers, so that they are made dynamic. So of these four values, the one that should update is the second number. Because the second number is the one that corresponds to the column or the number of columns that the offset function should send the cursor to or at. So the, the first number one here is the cursor moving downwards. And in all cases, the cursor has to move from E1 going downwards. But for the second number, this has to update, right? So if it's January, it will move one cell to the right. If it is March, it will go three cells to the right, and so on. Eight is always fixed. I have eight numbers here and one column for each of the month. So it's really this one that has to update. So for this one, I have to use match. So I am replacing the second value, the second uh, number argument of offset into match function. So match will search for January A2. 
among the cells. So we're not going to be bothered as to where February is, how many cells to the right offset should go for. The match function will give us how many cells okay, or which cell is the January cell found, which will be used by then the offset function. So in this case, I'm looking for January among those cells F1 to I1, and January is the first cell. Then that number one is the one that offset will use. February, for example, I start at E1, I will move one cell downwards. And then the next number should be the one given to us by match. So let's double click this now. So I got this answer here. So what happened is that I moved one cell downwards and then I let match tell me at which column can I find the February 2, right? So, or second cell of that F1 to I1. So that number 2 is the number of cells that your match, that your offset function will move the cursor to the right. 8 is fixed and then 1 column. So to verify if we get the right answer, I will sum the cells. I'm getting 109681, which is the same as this one. And then let's verify the rest. So I got here 111089, which is correct. So that is what the offset function does. Uh, you don't have to like do the cells one by one. You let offset function dynamically move the range of cells to the right in this case. So this is just one way that offset function can be used. We have uh, more ways that we can use it. Okay, but for that, I will have to create another video. So I'll see you in the next one.